as the list of implants I have not yet covered continues to dwindle with each passing video, I chose barrage repression to be the subject of today's video. For no reason other than having just re reprocessed two of these after a successful Dormant Realm Abyss run prior to starting the script for this video. And spoiler alert, I guess if you're looking to know where to find this implant, I kinda already spoiled it. But I guess all that's left is for you to guys to hit that subscribe button. Now, joking aside, let's cover what this implant actually does. First and foremost, this implant applies to your cannon weapons and provides a temporary damage per second boost upon activating the implant skills. And yes, the pauses just then was my dyslexia kicking in. Hooray! Now, how temporary, you might ask? Well, initially, you get a total of six volleys with your cannons. After the, those six volleys, the skill deactivates and you need to wait 30 seconds for each of those volleys to reload. That's three minutes in total. So, okay, we get six volleys before this expires. What makes those volleys so special, though? Well, at the cost of 25% of your weapon's accuracy falloff, your cannon's activation time reduces by an amount that scales with your implant's current level. That maxes out at a 60% reduction in your weapon's activation time. That means you're firing 60% faster and thus significantly boosting your damage per second over those six volleys. Note that due to the accuracy fall off penalty, you will need to ensure that you don't accidentally end up out of range when you activate this skill, as you could easily find yourself doing 60% less damage instead. That's a bit of an oopsie there. So now you're thinking, great, excellent, molto bene. I get an amazing DPS boost, but I only get it for six shots. It kind of sucks when you compare it with other implants. Well, this is where the level 15 passive skills come into play, starting, of course, with expanded missile storage. Don't ask me why it says missile storage. Because, well, yeah, technically a shell could be considered a missile because a missile is just something that is moving through the sky. But anyways, this isn't a missile implant. This particular skill boosts the number of cannon volleys that you can have with the implant's ability from six up to nine, allowing you to benefit from the skill for 50% longer. Alternatively, however, you can opt for a faster reload speed with the implant's main ability and instead reduce the reload speed from 30 seconds to 20 seconds with the passive skill continuous ramming. Which, yeah, that, that's a very curious name on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put that out there, continuous ramming. Now, <laughs> personally, considering every press of an implant's ability reduces... Reduces. Okay, let's start that little sentence again. Personally, considering every press of an implant's ability results in damage to the implant that has to be repaired in the future, I would prefer to get the most out of each implant activation and therefore adopt for the first option, expanded missile storage, whereby you receive more volleys out of each implant activation. But that's just me, conservation of resources and all of that. So what's next at level 30? Well, first we have repression mode as a passive skill. And I have to remember to actually press buttons on the screen. It's a bigger screen than usual and I'm still forgetting to press buttons. But anyway, this one reduces the accuracy fall off penalty on the implant's ability by half. That's 50%. Now we are only losing 12.5% of our accuracy fall off instead of 25%. That's not quite so bad a penalty to have to work around now. But alternatively, we could choose barrage mode. This skill further 
reduces our cannon's activation time, giving us even more DPS. And based on the slightly confusing way that this implant is worded, as with many of the implants, um, nothing more, it seems that the activation time boost that you're already receiving is itself multiplied by 1.25. It doesn't appear to grant an additional 25% bonus to the existing number in any way that could result in a theoretical 85% reduction in reduction time. In reduction time? Activation time. I really messed up with some of these words in this script. But hey, I could easily be wrong on this one. But either way, this is probably the option I would choose anyway, regardless of how the numbers play out. And by now you've probably got unaccustomed to those accuracy fall-off penalties. And you've probably accept accepted them. Getting more damage out of your weapons, that's kind of what we tend to do. And this brings us to the final ability up at level 45, Suppressive Fire. This ability, like some implants before it, grants us an electronic warfare option. In this case, upon activation, any targets that are hit automatically have their flight velocities reduced by 25%. You also get a bonus one cannon ammo loaded. I was kind of expecting it to fully load the cannon ammo, you know, give us a full volley, not just the one. But never mind, the rest of this ability is certainly interesting enough. Now, writing the script for this implant, naturally I asked myself, which cannon weapon would be the most suitable for this implant? Auto cannons or strike cannons? And it's a valid question. We yeah, the answer, and I'm going to try and bring up some, ex some examples up on screen right now, appears to be strike cannons. And there's a couple of reasons for this decision. But the one that stands out the most to me is the penalty to the accuracy fall off. The main penalty. So let's have a look at a C-type large autocannon and just see what we're talking about here. So looking at the example of this C-type large autocannon, we can see that the optimal range represents a mere fraction of the weapon's effective weapons range. And that is the optimal range plus accuracy fall off. It is heavily dependent on its accuracy fall off to hit its targets. As we can see, 4.8 kilometers optimal range and 22.8% kilometers accuracy fall off. So yeah, this is very dependent on its accuracy fall off to be able to hit its targets. And any cut to that is a severe reduction to the weapon's actual weapons range. But if we were to have a look at a large strike cannon and press the correct button, which I always fail to actually do when recording these videos. Here we go. We will see that with the strike cannons on the other hand, we have a clean split between optimal range and accuracy fall off, making them significantly less impacted by the implant's ability. Also, all the way up at level 45, strike cannons with their lower tracking speed have much more to gain from having their targets move 25% slower. And also, if we take into account activation range, activation range, activation time, I'm really messing up the whole activation time wording with this video. But the C-type st strike cannon was 20 seconds. Here we have 7.88 seconds for this C-type large auto cannon, meaning that you're most likely getting more out of each volley because each volley with the strike cannons is dealing more damage in addition. But that's just another nitpicky thing. Now, I'm not going to go into much more detail, as I simply don't have any cannon skills or experience with this implant to really talk about where the implant would fit best, other than my presumption that it is more suited to strike cannons than it is to auto cannons. And this marks the transition into the part of the script whereby I show you how you can obtain this implant in game. Now, as I alluded to at the start of the video, it can be obtained as a random reward for completing 
the dormant realm known as before the abyss. Which, for some reason, I always call into the abyss. I, I don't know why. I don't know where I got into the abyss from. Maybe it was a book title. I honestly don't know. But anyways, uh, it's DR2 when you're looking for in-game callouts. As for guaranteed rewards, it is available at levels 4 and 7 in the very first... Uh, in the very first... For the very first time completions for the level 4 and level 7 of Dormant Realm the Abyss. Again, the same Dormant Realm as before. I'm really starting to mince my words right now. It could be just getting a bit late in the day. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section below why you think my words are getting a bit jumbled up, let's say. But anyway, that leaves us with figuring out the cost of purchasing the implant through the market. And this is typically where I leave the script a little bit blank. Because the delay between me writing the script and me recording it can mean that the numbers could be completely off. All it takes is a doctrine change for a major alliance and everything can be completely off. So let's have a look. We are looking for barrage repression. And I just had to look at the title of this script to actually remind myself what implant I was looking for. So as we can see, experimental, 338 million. That is affordable as implants go. I know it's not massively affordable for some, but as implants go, 338 mil to try it out. That's not too bad. 2.4 billion for it at the basic level, that is blue. If you're going purple, I have to press the right button first to give you the number. We're looking around 7 billion. And of course, if you really want to break the bank and empty out what is most likely all that you have in the wallet at the moment, 11.1 billion. It's an affordable implant, as implants go. You can actually buy them all on the market. Usually when I go to the marketplace at this part in the video, we find that the first two levels of an implant is not even available because it's either in such high demand that it's always getting bought out. For example, the Focus Crystal. Or it just doesn't get spawned at all and nobody has it and nobody's selling it. At least this is one that everybody can get their hands on even at the lower level and have a play around with. But anyway, we are back on script again for the end of this video. So please let us know in the comment section below what your experiences are with this implant. And feel free to highlight any mistakes I might have made in this video, beyond the verbal ones, because I know I've made a lot of verbal mistakes in this video. Um, yeah, we're all here to learn after all, although I don't think I'll ever learn how to talk properly, I guess. But anyway, until the next video, fly casual in New Eden.